الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تنصروا الله ينصركم ويثبت أقدامكم صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغوا عني ولو آية أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وأنا رب العلماء respected friends elders beloved brothers mothers and sisters all praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace blessings and salutations be upon our master our leader Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in these ayat of the Quran that I have recited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that O people of Iman in tansurullaha if you help Allah yansurkum Allah will help you so how is it possible for insan and for men that is so weak and has so many faults and shortcomings for us to help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is Allah Samad Allah is independent of the entire creation while all of us for every second of our life we are totally dependent on Allah so what is the meaning of this verse then in tansurullah yansurkum if you help Allah Allah will help you wa yuthabbit aqdamakum and Allah will make your feet Allah will make your feet firm and steadfast the mufassirin explain that the help of Allah means to help the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assess the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today in the world there are those who are from the mujahideen those who are fighting in the path of Allah they are helping the deen of Allah with their swords with their blood they are helping the deen of Allah like this the writers they are helping the deen of Allah by writing kitabs their pens are doing the writing they are using their pens to help the deen of Allah. They are those who are the ulama. They are teaching. They are spreading the deen of Allah through means of their tongue. They are advising the people from the masajid, etc. Our imams, our shuyukh. They are helping the deen of Allah through their tongues. And they are those people <coughs> who are helping the deen of Allah in other ways. So it is for us to now see that how do I fit in the equation? How am I helping the deen of Allah? If I desire the help of Allah, then I should be of means of assistance to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith that I have recited, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Balligu anni walaw ayah. Convey from me to the people, even if it is one verse, even if it is only one ayah. And even one short teaching of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even if it is Mansamata Najah, that person who keeps quiet, he will be attaining salvation. Even if it is something small like this, but the meaning, it is full of meaning. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that even if you know one verse, even if you know one ayat, even if you know one part of deen, any small part of deen, then convey this to me to other people. Now I will give you the crux of my talk. These three incidents I want to share with you. Of people who are helping the deen of Allah in different ways. And to inspire us that in our own walks of life, amongst our own circle of friends, how we can also become a means and an assistance to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hidayat and guidance is directly from Allah. But the effort of hidayat that is for us. We can make the effort of Hidayat. But Hidayat will come directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who Allah wants to guide, Allah will guide that person. Who Allah deprives, then that person will remain deprived because it is Allah's decision. But the intention with the things that we are doing, there are many actions of us throughout the day with whoever we are interacting with. We should have behind every action of ours besides the, motiv uh, the motivation to do that action, also the intention of Hidayat behind the action. So once there was a Jamaat that went to, there was actually an Arab Jamaat that came to Heidelberg. 
and there was one brother in the Arab Jamaat uh, who mentioned this incident. So he said that many, many years ago, when Tabligh had just started, so there was a Jamaat that had come from Nizamuddin, they had gone to Saudi Arabia. And the Jamaat's Tashkil was made to a place called Wadi e Fatima. So Wadi e Fatima exists till today also. But nevertheless, when people got there, this Jamaat went to this place. Because it was the first Jamaat that ever came to this place, people were very hesitant to go anywhere near the Jamaat. The Arab brothers had already had in their mind that, look, these people, they have come here. They are Sahirin. Sahirin means they are magicians. Uh, so stay away from them. Don't visit them. Don't sit in their talks, in their bayans. Don't go to the masjids. Just stay away from them until they are gone. So anyway, these brothers, when they came to this place, Wadi Fatima, and nobody came to meet them. No one made their Nusrat, no one came to the Masjid, nobody sat with the Jamaat, nothing. So the Jamaat spent their time. There were only two youngsters who they ever came in contact with while they were in this place. And that, how that happened also, these youngsters were playing football outside, they were playing soccer. So one boy kicked the ball into the Sahan, the courtyard of the Masjid. So when he kicked it into the courtyard of the masjid, the brothers of the Jamaat were having talim. So the two boys ran inside the masjid to get the ball. When the brothers of the Jamaat seen them, one brother stood up quickly, he took a juice in his hand and he ran for the boys. So the one boy started screaming, these are sahirin, they are magicians, go away, get away from here. And he turned around and he ran out of the masjid. The other youngster, he thought now, I mean, what's the harm? You know, it's just a Jamaat. These people are here, they're sitting in a masjid. Uh, yeah, let me meet them. What's the problem? I want my ball. So he went and his brother met him. So he met the youngster. He just made salam with him. He smiled at him and he gave him one juice. That's all finished. He gave him the juice. He made salam and he smiled at him. The boy took the juice. He made salam. He took his ball and he ran out of the masjid. 30, 40 years later, this brother who was in this Jamaat, he has now become a Muqim in the Merkas in India. A ja now, his job in the Merkas is to receive the Jamaats that have come from foreign countries. When he hears that there's a Jamaat that has come from Wadi e Fatima, he can't believe it. He's amazed that that same place where we went, people never gave us a second look. From that place, now 30 years later, there's a whole Jamaat here. So he goes to meet the Jamaat. So he was amazed, he greets them, he's so happy to meet them. Then he told them, they said, no, we're from Wadi Fatima. He said, let me tell you a story. 30, 40 years ago, we were the first Jamaat to go to this place. And then he says the whole story. And he said, the only person that I met there was this youngster and I gave him a juice. So the Amir of the Jamaat, the Amir of the Jamaat tells him that I also know the story. So he asked him, how do you know the story? He said, I was the boy you gave the juice to. I was the boy that you gave the juice to. That's how I know the story. Today I have come as the Amir with the whole Jamaat from Wadi Fatima. So the man told them, or he, in this incident, he said, that when I gave that boy the juice, my only intention in my heart was, Allah, give this man hidayat. Allah, give this man guidance. This youngster, he's a youngster, he's a small boy. Give him guidance, give him hidayat. 30 years later, Allah showed him the intention of his hidayat. Allah showed him the intention that he made. Allah manifested for him in front of his eyes. One day, one of my ustads, they were in Kash. They went to visit one brother. So they knocked on his door. The brother opened, he told the Jamaat, listen, before you start telling me anything, I want to tell you something. So you listen to me, I want to talk first, then you can talk after that. So he said, okay, no problem. So he started talking. So he told them that, you know what, I got a son here. My son is a qualified doctor or a lawyer, I don't know, whatever, he had a good profession. Uh, he's qualified, he got top marks in his class, but uh, he doesn't want to practice. He's sitting here and making shoes with me. I'm a shoemaker. I make shoes. He's sitting and making shoes with me. He, uh, he couldn't get a, a job anywhere and he's not even looking to go get a job. He's a qualified doctor. He's busy sitting and making shoes here. You know? So the brothers consoled him, etc. 
and they spoke to him they said no inshallah make dua you know it will change then at the ending they told him you know make some intention inshallah uh, you know you can make intention now uh, maybe 20 years later Allah will show you your intention so the brother started crying so they told him look brother don't cry there's no need to cry why are you crying so he said that you know what you know when my son was born this was a good 30 40 years ago when my son was born then I was so happy when I seen him so in my heart I made intention that you know this boy he can help me one day in my shop to make shoes <laughs> so 20 years later that intention he made Allah showed him the intention 20 years later now he's busy crying this guy is a doctor he's making shoes yeah he can be a doctor he's busy making shoes <laughs> but what it was actually the intention he made when the child was born that one day you'll help me to make shoes now 20 years later he's seeing the intention he's seeing it happen in front of his eyes one day there was a, a Arab brother outside of uh, Saudi in Mecca and Medina and that on the outskirts there are many people from South Asia from Philippines Thailand uh, they work in these places so this Arab brother stopped at the filling station and one Philippine brother non-Muslim he was helping him so he asked his Arab brother what you so happy about because when he jumped out he was happy he greeted them and he's asking them they asked him he asked him why are you so happy he said what do you mean I'm, I'm making salam with you I'm greeting you as Muslims we greet we smile uh, so he asked him uh, what what is a Muslim so he said no a Muslim we believe in Allah and so he said what is this what is this belief in Allah what is this Muslim what are you talking about so the Arab brother he had a book in his car introduction to Islam small thin book he took out the book he gave it to him he said yeah read this book and he filled his petrol he carried on two three weeks later he came back he was passing he stops by the same garage when he stopped there he asked the other people uh, where's this brother I met here where is he they said this brother packed up his things he's gone back to Philippines so he asked them why what happened to him so he said one day one man came here he gave him some book about Islam so he, they didn't know it's the same guy he said he gave him some book about Islam and uh, this man started reading that book and the next day he said you know what what's written in this book makes a lot of sense to me and this is right it's it's the truth what is written here so he went to some masjid and he took his shahada day he became a Muslim and after a few days he, really, he said to himself that you know Islam teaches that any person who doesn't have Iman if they die like this then they will be going to Jahannam forever so me I have become a Muslim I, I might be okay but my whole family in Philippines they are all non-Muslims that means if they have to die like that uh, you know what is the what is the condition going to be like so he came to his boss he told his boss listen uh, I want to cancel my work visa I need to go back home I got much more important work to do than filling petrol for people and he has packed up his things he went back and they told then they told us brother that the last news that we got from this guy from Philippines is that his whole family has now accepted Islam subhanallah Aji what an ajeeb thing the brother gave him one small kitab on Islam see brothers what I'm saying is there's so many things we do in a day just with the intention for Hidayat one person you greet one person you meet one person you speak to them about Allah you tell them something you might not see it tomorrow you might not see it in your lifetime 20 30 years from now that man's life can be changed why because of maybe one small fruit you gave him one small salam you made to him you showed him something of Islam you gave him one book anything just with the intention in your heart Allah give this man Hidayat and like I have said, we can make the effort. We are there to see how we can help the deen of Allah so Allah can help us. Hidayat is in Allah's hands. Allah will give it to whoever He wants. There is one, there is one story in a book called Al-Qissatul uh, Mu'athira. Uh, it's in Arabic. So there is this, this kissa there, the story of... Uh, there was one Arab boy who... He went to become a doctor so he writes there that when I was studying I wasn't very interested in my studies my marks were not that good 
I didn't do so good and uh, anyway, but I passed, I managed, I became a doctor. And it so happened that for my internship, for my housemanship, you know, when you finish doctor, then two years they send you to practice somewhere before you, you can get your degree. So he say where they sent me was very close to my house. It wasn't far from where I stay. It so happened that I got the hospital there. So he said there were many of the foreign students who used to also come and work in this place. So because I was like a local, uh, I used to take them around everywhere, you know, sightseeing, touring, show them around. Because I was a local guy, I had a car, my family was there. And before they used to go home, after the one, two years that they had to do their internship, uh, before they used to go home, I used to call them to my house. I used to give them a nice big dower, a nice meal. And I used to give them some gift, you know, something because now I'll never see them again. They're going to go back England, America, Germany, wherever they're going. I probably I'll never see them again. So I used to give them some gift with which they can remember me. So he said there was this one brother, his name was John. He was from England and he was finishing. He was going back and I knew that he liked all these uh, olden days things, you know, antiques and these old things, coins and so I told my father, listen, uh, we, were, we were discussing it one night and I told my father, give me something from the house. We have so many antique things. I want to take something. I want to give him as a gift. You know, he's going. So he'll always remember me. So my cousin was there and my cousin told me, uh, why, don't you, why don't you give him a book on Islam? So he said, look, I wasn't too dindar. I wasn't pious. So I said, yeah, okay. I'll, you know, I just like brush. I said, yeah, all right, I'll think about it. And I never really took it serious and I left it. Uh, the next day when we were buying the gifts, whatever, uh, I was at a convenience store. So at a garage or any shop, spaza shop. And uh, on the counter there while I'm paying for my goods, uh, I see a small book there for five real, so like five rand. It was an introduction, simple book about Islam, you know, introduction to Islam. So he say, I, I looked at this book and then I thought about what my cousin said. So I said, okay, it's only five rand, five reals. Let me just take it. I'll hide it in this guy's thing so that now, because how I'm going to show him that I want to tell him about Islam. He's a non-Muslim. Just now he, you know, we have a fight and uh, I don't know how he's going to react. So I'll hide it inside his thing. So when he gets to England, uh, then he can open, he'll find it. If he reads it, I, whatever, I don't know. I put it. So he said, I put it. He had his doubt. He flew away, he went to England. Many, many years later, one day I received a letter and the letter is written in English. So he say, I now obviously I'm Arab. Uh, my English wasn't that good. I'm busy reading this letter. And at the end, the letter says that this is from your friend, Dayfullah. So he's saying now, this brother, that in the whole world, I don't know anyone with the name Dayfullah besides myself. His name was Dayfullah. He say, I've never come another across another Muslim whose name is Dayfullah. So I don't know who's this from England saying he's my old friend and his name is Dayfullah. So anyway, he said, I read some more. Eventually I worked out, okay, the letter is from England. What the letter is saying? The letter is saying that, brother, I want to thank you because you gave me the greatest gift that I could ever get. So he was surprised. Now what this guy, then he carried on, he read. So he read that this letter is actually from your friend John. This is when I studied, this is where I was, this is how we were together. And before I left, you put a book inside my things. When I got to England, I read this book and it made a lot of sense to me. I went to the closest Islamic center I could find. I took my shahada there and me and my family, my wife, my children, we are married. Uh, and all of us have accepted Islam. And I am just writing this letter to thank you that you gave me the greatest gift that anyone could ever have. You introduced me to Islam. If it wasn't for you, I would have been lost in my life. I would have probably been off track. I would have never seen the beauty and the, the light of Islam. And I'm just writing to thank you. And because you are the person, the means of me being introduced to Allah, being introduced to Deen, I have named myself after you. And I want to thank, I want to ask you, please make dua for me. I will always make dua for you. And I want to thank you because you were the one that gave me hidayat. You were the means for my guidance. So this brother, this Dayfullah, this guy put his head down in shame. So he is now thinking to himself that 
you know, this brother is thanking me that I gave him Hidayat. Actually, he has opened my eyes, he has given me Hidayat. And then he's sitting and he's lamenting and thinking to himself that for five rials, for five ren, one man accepted Islam on my hands. And not even, not, I didn't even, with ikhlas, you know, with sincerity, I chant. It was just, by the way, I saw the kitab, I took it, I shoved it inside, I said, whatever happens, happens. On five rials, somebody accepted Islam because of me. And then he thought, how many people I sent from here to their different countries? How many five rials I could have used if it was to save one man from Jahannam? If it was could introduce one more person to Islam, one more person to Allah, how many five rials I would have used to do this if I knew this was going to happen? So sometimes, brothers, we all are not educated, we are all not knowledgeable, we don't have everything. But we know something, little we know, everyone knows, I know something, you know something. You know, uh, become the means of someone introducing someone to Deen, someone to Hidayat, someone to Islam. Sometimes because of our own lack of confidence, we feel, no, I don't know, now what I'm going to tell this brother, what I'm it's more Allah looks at niyatul mu'min khayrun min amali. The niyat of a believer is better than his actions. Sometimes it is the cry that is in the heart. We do a simple action to you, it might look like nothing. But to that brother, it could be the time when Allah has changed his life for him. Allah is going to make a decision for hidayat for him. And if we become the means of even one person changing his life, then Ali radiallahu anhu, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, that thus, if one person has to get hidayat on your hands, it is better for you than even having red camels. And red camels was like having a very expensive mode of transport. One person must get hidayat, and that entire person's life, from the time when he accepts Islam till he dies, every good action that that man does, Allah will write the reward in your book of deeds also. So Allah give us understanding, brothers. Allah give us the tawfiq. Let us see, inshallah, wherever we are, whoever we are meeting, whatever we are doing, in our own small broken ways, let us introduce people. We have a whole medan of people around us. People are thirsty for guidance. People are searching everywhere. They are looking. They want to be guided. We have to become the means of introducing these people to Allah and to Nabi Sallallahu Allah give us all understanding of whatever has been said, the ability to practice on it and convey it to us. Wa akhiru da'wanan.